So, first of all, I would like to, for those who are not familiar with the area where I conduct the field work and the area where the game live, I want to give just a brief, uh, no, um, a brief, uh, uh, maybe four, four slides about the area so you can see what it's. The Inu people live in the uh, Quebec and Labrador Peninsula, and basically in the eastern part of the, the peninsula, they, is, uh, they are an Algonquian people, which means they are very closely related to the Cree people, for example, that live uh, right west uh, of, of the Inu. And actually, in the late uh, 18th century, um, beginning of the 19th century, it was considered the, the same people. Um, um, for example, the work of the first anthropologist in the area, like Speck, he would you know, classify the Cree as a Montagnier people that are, you know, the formerly Inu people, or the way that the Inu people was formerly known. So, uh, this, uh, this a lot of work in a specific area in Shekashi, uh, that is uh, this place here, right in the Melville Lake area. This uh, is a continui cultural continuity in the Quebec and Labrador Peninsula that makes uh, a lot of connections uh, among the people that, that are there. Uh, Damien, who, who's, whose map is that? Who, who published that map? That's the Smithsonian. Yeah, the uh, Smithsonian, yeah. yeah. It's, a, yeah. it's, it's a very inaccurate. It's a much, <laughs> much larger area that the you know, people who self-identify you know, go away for. Anyway, well, that, that, not that, that, at anyway. Yeah, exactly. It's that, 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 not very accurate. Yeah, that, that's the point. I mean, this is uh, cultural continuity, and actually, uh, this uh, division between Cree and Inu has to do also for who colonized uh, the different areas of the Quebec and Labrador Peninsula. Yeah. The Cree people were colonized mostly by uh, Anglican, English-speaking, you know, colonizers. While the Inu were more affected by the French colonization of the South uh, Quebec, uh, uh, you know, Quebec province. So. Um, yeah. Melty Lega, Chica uh, City is um, right uh, uh, here, is um, uh, at the west part of the Lake Melville that communicates the area with the sea. Um, it's uh, right uh, very close to the Grand Lake. The Grand Lake is uh, also very interesting communication line, if you will, that can connect the, the area with you know, part of the, the western part of Labrador. If you, for example, one can travel by Iskidu in a few hours and get to the west part of, of the lake. Uh, and same here from using the Lake Mabel also, it's a very, very good communication uh, mean to, to go to the Billy Mountains. So it's a very interesting area because actually it was a, Inhabited since uh, several something years ago, as, as many archaeological researchers have shown, and, and perhaps was a gathering point uh, that would you know, communicate with several places of, of Lava. So, after this, right across the river from Norris River, uh, this is a settled town that started when the first uh, trading posts uh, were, uh, were uh, developing in the area. And this maybe was happening in the, in the mid. Uh, uh, the, the first grants to, to occupy the area were done by the French before the French and, and English war. And, and once the, all the area is, is, is you know, granted to, to the British Crown, uh, they start to develop uh, the trading post. Uh, the Hudson Bay Company only uh, yeah, arrived in the area in the 19th century. So, and and this is this is, Asila, this is the road that now communicates a ship with uh, Goose Bay, that is another important town in the area. Uh, Goose Bay actually is uh, developed uh, during the war, the Second World War, in 1942, uh, and is uh, the, the place where the uh, Allies' base is, is put, and, and it will be very important military for, for since, since then. Yeah, so would be the largest, largest town, largest white town in the area. So, yeah. Chia City is about uh, 1,500 people live, live in town. In Nova River, about 500, 600 people now, maybe. And in Goose Bay, about 7,000, 8,000 people lives uh, in the area. Uh, these are more or less uh, from three or four years ago, 
doesn't count some adult population that now lives in Goose Bay because the lower Churchill project, which brings you know, a lot of people to work in the project and live in the area, at least during the construction of the, the dams. So, and what brought me to Shishashi from that far in Argentina? So, that's an yeah. interesting question. So, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> But I, but I have some interest when I start my research project. And, and basically, I, I started interested in, in, in the different uh, ways that the old subsistence economy uh, survived in the area. Because we know, I mean, well, many researchers that have worked in this area and all across northern Canada, that the subsistence economy, or what was called subsistence economy, the economy was diminished. There was less important nutritional, nutritionally, the wild meats uh, compared to the store of food. Increasingly, the Aboriginal peoples, replaced by the colonization process, would settle in permanent towns, hunting hunt less and live more from, you know, different foodstuffs that are not, you know, hunted but bought in the stores. Basically, we can say that the cash economy or the market economy was advancing over these other form of subsistence, all the social economy that are uh, the way that was called, that is called. So that was my initial, my initial approach to, to the problem. I, I thought that I, I could document what is still the importance of this type of economy, what is still the important, or how important is the, um, the uh, carrying meat as a, as a food and as a you know, social you know, question. You know, how, why they keep on hunting and what is the importance of that. And I thought that perhaps this, this idea of the, uh, a way to stop or, or slow down the advancement of the market I mean, could, could be one of the reasons, uh, one, one way to understand it. So, but after a way, while in the field I started to interact with different people and I, and I spoke one of the elders of Shishashi that he would tell me when I tried to Ask why you know we still why they were still sharing carrying meat and and how was that what happened carrying meat why you share or, or why not right and he answered me that sharing carrying that is not not done now that was before not time ago we will give to the elders first but now you we give, give all kind of carrying meat to anybody like people from Happy Valley Goose Bay the, the town we just met right. It does not matter too much. You can share with anybody. But in the past, you would only share with Inu people. You have enough need for yourself, your family, maybe your daughter, your father, and grandfather. But you cannot have from everybody. So I'm thinking of this advancement of the market economy driven by the colonization process. Well, we can think that, well, yes, he's trying to say there is a new economy a new group of people bring in that economy and we cannot you know, share with them or we, can, we have to share with them in a different way. Something is happening with this advancement. But on the other hand also, I thought that this, uh, uh, it's difficult to, to, to come up with a complete, or an answer from that point of view because of course, bonus uh, would be meant also to people that is not Inu, people from Happy Valley Bay. I remember the first time that I met him in the, in the bush. In the, he had this camp in Shipiskan Lake. It's about, say, one hour flight from from Shikashi, from Guzbe. And, and he, he would offer me to the pilot. He offered me to me, that, you know, not Inu. But he also offered me to, to the pilots that are from Happy Valley. But also, I saw that this, this was the case for many, many people in, in, in Shikashi, that they, they would basically, they wouldn't think that they had to give meat only to, to Inu people. But at the same time, they wouldn't give meat to some Inu people, some relative that for whatever reason, they wouldn't share with them. They would choose whom to share the meat, basically. Sharing the meat was some, some, something that is one's self's choice. So I thought that perhaps, maybe, if I stop thinking about, about these large you know, wars that are colliding and one trying to you know, uh, stop the other and people trying to 
caught in this conflict, try to make sense of this uh, without uh, being, uh, being against one or the other, try to make the decision thinking of those, these words. I thought, maybe no, maybe we, we shouldn't think in, in those terms. And, and maybe we can think uh, more um, you know, as giving a question of a choice in which one has to choose you know, somebody among those anybody. And, and something will happen with this choice. Something will be you know, constituted through, through this choice. So that's why I kind of decided to work with a different theoretical framework that that of you know, the economists colliding or, or the worlds colliding as other anthropologists that work in the know work uh, uh, since uh, Herrick's and 50 years ago, and which is a very productive way to, to look at this problem. I think there is a, a lot of things that can, can come out as, as these uh, sharing strategies that make sense if you refer to these you know, colliding worlds. But also, I think there is things that don't make sense uh, when, if you think in, in those terms. And we need to, perhaps, in order to make sense of those things, of these very specific things, uh, we, we can choose other, you know, other way, other theoretical way to look at it. Th that's why I choose uh, my theoretical frame, framework that I thought it would give uh, room to account of this specificity of sharing to see sharing more in this specific uh, way, rather than uh, you know, referring to these uh, larger words. So, and I took first the concept of the social um, from Latour. Um, the difference uh, of, the first difference that can be marked with the previous approach is instead of thinking the social as the, the thing that makes sense or that explains this uh, sharing practices, we can think of the social of what comes out of these practices and try to see, and try to see what is you know, constituted through, through these practices by, by, uh, by performing them. So, and, and so the social, instead of, seeing, instead of being a thing that is uh, giving the rationality to the sharing, the sharing act, the social comes to be more as a descriptor these associations that are uh, constituted by sharing. By sharing, I bring in this relationship with the animals, with other people, with, with the land, and, and this is what becomes social by the act of giving, rather than being social because they refer to another you know, larger thing or, or stuff that, that the social defines you know, before, right? So that's what was one thing. Another important thing that I also want to, I thought that so the sharing would, would bring along the social is the question of the skills that one's need to learn from, from childhood and all through the life about sharing, about the world, about the, the importance and the values that, the, that sharing brings along when one, one shares with, with other person, when one chooses the somebody out of the everybody, or you know, the anybody that one has to choose. So, and Skirmer, I take the idea of Skirmer from Ingold, and he worked, uh, uh, he published in the 2000 this book, uh, The Procession of the Byron, on the, where he tries to develop the different ideas about how one learns, how one relates with the environment and end up dwelling in a place, with, with all the implication of that dwelling has. And, and skill can be defined as, uh, as uh, the way that one uh, acquires skills uh, by being involved with the instructors in, in a constant process of doing, rather than you know, learning things uh, simply by uh, enunciation. Right? So, uh, it's a very pragmatic way to look at, uh, at learning, if you will, and, and by which uh, the enunciation of abstraction we can do from learning has to do more as a reflection of the action that happened before, the practice that happened before, rather than direct the action itself. So it's not that we have to read a manual and then you know how to drive, or we know how to operate the machine, or we know how to hunt. No, we have to be hunting and align our bodies in the hunting practice in order to really learn how one ha have to hunt. 
and that, and that has to do with perception too. It's not just you know, uh, the activities that one can do. It also has, uh, involves uh, the perception itself. Um, my, my experience, to, to, to tell an anecdote, my experience when I when I was there, uh, for me it was impossible to see the the wapineu, which is uh, in English the uh, white ptarmigan. The white ptarmigan, as the word indicates, is white, and with the snow background, if you are if you are not trained, your perception in order to see the the birds, you don't see them. It's it's, it's very difficult to to see them, and it, it, it took me several months to be along with hunters uh, to start to uh, see them. I, I wouldn't say, I only see them when they shoot them. They shoot them and they fly away with the, with the, the white wood concert with the trees and I would see them, or I would see the blood, right, of course. So, but it took me about a year to, to barely see them, let alone hunting them, right now. <laughs> so, uh, but my companion would hunt two weapon with one shot, right, or two or three sometimes. And I need, I don't know, 10 shots to get one. <laughs> so it was terrible. Well, that is because this practice is, what I'm saying is this practice is, the sharing practice constitute the social and also constitute value. Also, you know, I'll bring along the theory of our value in which uh, uh, value actually comes from the action itself. So we cannot think about the value of things if we cannot think about the action that take those things to become social. This is, perhaps, is, is Geber brings a little bit the Marxist idea of value, in the sense that it's, for Marx, war would, would be uh, the action that creates value in the world. The, the, this, uh, the value of things in the market are more the fetish, right? So, and this is more a, a generalization of that idea by thinking that it is the, the, the human, uh, human world, human doing, what really brings this value uh, in context, right? And, and it brings this value in a way that can be appreciated. So what I'm thinking that the sharing action would, would, would create value, and, and perhaps this would be one of the motivations of, uh, of sharing, right? So, and also something interesting, because of course, uh, one might think value in a very, uh, or usually is thought in a very narrow way uh, of thinking of the economy. In a way that, yes, of course, uh, things have value because uh, they, they help us to su su survive because of subsistence, because it helps us to live our material uh, life or improve our material experience. But maybe, you know, there's different ways to, to think about value, different heterogeneous ways to think about value that is not only related to this materiality. And, and it, it's interesting because uh, Tal, who discussed with uh, Durkheim about these things, who bring this idea that why don't think that economy is not really about wealth, but also could be about other values that also can be, one can be passionate about, that can, one can pursue in the same way that one pursues wealth, right? And that's the case for, for him would be glory, for example, or, or beauty, you know, some aesthetics you know, that, that one can, can pursue. And I think that maybe by giving, by sharing, you know, there was some value being created, being uh, realized. And those values that would escape this uh, larger explanation about sharing that has to do with cash economy or the social cohesion, all those things, also would be what is coming out of sharing. And, and we don't, we cannot use those larger you know, frameworks to, to explain them. I would have to go more to the practices themselves that create these values. So, and that is what I, you know, said to the field to, to prove, to demonstrate by, with my, with my name. So, so basically that, you know, Kari Mumin, basically, rather than be explained by, you know, the, the different, Social, uh, if, uh, social reasons you know, that one might find in this uh, social economy or market economy or different, different ways we can find that sharing actually is what create this value and you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, we can see not as being explained by that, by this 
the larger you know, complexes, but are rather explaining the value that is coming from, from the sharing actions. So, and when I get to the, to Shekhashit, I start to do my research, I found that there are two ways in which um, caribou is, is hunted and uh, shared. And maybe, you know, to, we, we are differentiating mainly for who organized this, this hunt. One is the uh, household-based hunt, right, that I call, uh, that is simply organized informally among a you know, group of families, group of hunters, two hunters, or, or sometimes even only one hunter that goes out and, and gets some caribou in the in the road. This is the Trasado Highway. Okay. You can see uh, <coughs> the uh, Trasado Highway goes east to west and cross uh, Labrador from, actually now you can go from car right to, on the way to Labrador City by, by the by highway. Uh, at that time the section between Goose Bay and car right wasn't open yet, but it was by the end of my, of my February 2009. Uh, but you can still go from Gooseway to La City. I mean, you can go from Gooseway to Quebec, right? And, but because uh, it goes east to west and the Shores River here uh, migrate north to south, it was very common that the big, big uh, part of the herd would be crossing the road or be close to the road, m more or less by October. October, November, you would start to see a, a lot of uh, groups of caribou like that. So it was very easy for a, for a group, of group of hunters group of families to simply take a truck, go to a road, park the truck in the road, <laughs> and go with a skidoo or walking with the snowshoes and, and get a couple of animals, right? So, and that was one, one way of, of hunting. Another way was based, uh, organized by the community itself. There is two main organizations uh, operating in Shehashit. One is the Shehashit in First Nation, the Bank Council, which is more or less the municipal authority, if, if you will, that would be in charge of in the streets and, and different activities that are exclusively in, in the reserve area. And the other is the new nation that comprises both Shehashis and Natashis, the, the, two, the two settlements in, in Labrador. The, uh, both of them would organize these hands uh, along the road or would also hire an air airplane or a helicopter and go further Farther away in the, in the, in the country. <coughs> so, but it was for a for, for group of hunters, a household based group of hunters, it would be easier to use the, the road because it would be cheaper and, and, and readily accessible. Still, the Bank Council of the Nation would organize flights, would take families to, to live in, in the country for, for periods of, of time, and for weeks or sometimes even more. But of course, it's more expensive, and I thought it was a way to, to hunt too. And actually, when I met Ponas, for example, I met him when he, while he was in one of these uh, outposts. And, and I met him because uh, one of the flights that was going there was empty. You know? and, and so I could, you know, kind of uh, jump in, in the flight and go there. But it was coming back full, so that was a you know, tricky situation. I had to stay for a while there waiting, you know, some empty plane, you know. Scary, very, you know, fearful that we stay there for the whole summer. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, summer is the worst season in Laura, that, that's, that's very clear. No? So, uh, when, you know, coming from South America, one thing, now oh, summer is the best, right? So, no snow, but, you know, it's no snow, but it's flies. Right? So, and one end up learning that snow is better than flies. Big time. Anyway, so, well, and this is, for example, uh, talking about this uh, household-based hand. This is, for example, all the, the cabins, more or less uh, mapped the uh, new cabins along the Trasado Highway. So uh, you can, you can appre uh, appreciate it. It's, uh, it's, uh, many of them, and all of them can be used for several families. Uh, even if, for example, one uncle has a cabin in along the road, of course, ev everybody that is more or less close to, to that person can use a cabin. We, we, I don't think I ever stop in a cabin that was owned by any of the parties that, that was, you know, staying that night in the cabin. It was, you know, ready that, uh, uh, was an understanding that one can use this cabin. So it was very easy to spend a couple of nights in a row, get a couple of animals, and then distribute the animals uh, 
in the family. And that's an important point because where I, I can find, I found it, uh, if this, uh, the way that these hands are organized would also, you know, have different ways to distribute the, the hand too. And this is an important point because when I try to map all the sharing that happened in the last, the previous year of <coughs> my research, I found that what, there were different patterns of, of sharing. So the, the first one I noticed is that, for example, there are certain group of, uh, of certain houses that are sh the sharing household, or in this case, the, the, the bank council sharing with more household than others. Right? They are more centralized on this, uh, mm -hmm. while mm -hmm. others, like this one or that one or the black one, are less centralized, are a bit more balanced. No? So, um, and that was it. We, we, we will come back to this, but before coming to this, I want to talk about values first, to understand first uh, if I'm saying that sharing constitute or realize these, these values, maybe we can uh, go understand what values I'm talking about. The first value is generosity. And I have this quote. Let me read it if you are too far. <coughs> the people who can go and hunt are the ones that are best to share. They are supposed to share. They go out, for example, to Ormond Road, and they kill, I don't know, know whatever number of caribou and bring them back to the community. They have to share with their families and other people that can get caribou. They, they ask if they want caribou and give them caribou. This applies to any animal. You don't know how for yourself. It's better to share with the community. <coughs> This is probably you know, one of the best quotes that I have that explain this uh, generosity uh, value. By sharing, one can be generous and one can you know, produce this generosity. And but something interesting too is that as I start to find that one of the people that are, that are the target of the generosity are the other people, the elders. And I think that makes you know an interesting point that we'll, we'll come back to that too. And another value that I think that is uh, realized uh, by sharing is has to do with autonomy. As I mentioned at the beginning, well, there is a choice that one has to make to choose the somebody's that would make out out of the anybody's that can be target of, of the meat gift. So and. And I think perhaps the, one of the best ways to, to put this, the way that Ben Andrew, one of the uh, Inu intellectuals, that he would say that the Inu is a society affected of a high degree of initiative, self-reliance, and responsibility, and which offer a return of life of extraordinary liberty. And I think also it's important to understand that this uh, liberty, this autonomy, is not the sense of autonomy we might have in our own society, in which uh, autonomy is based on the in individual, right? I mean, we are autonomous as, as individuals, and, and we are um, basically opposed our autonomy to other individuals. And, and as long as we can push uh, our autonomy towards them, you know, we can maintain, you know, our distance, and we will be autonomous in that way. I don't think this is the way that we can see autonomy in this this area, I mean, you know, what I came to understand is, is uh, autonomy also has to do with our decision how affect others, or basically how affect our relationships. And if you think of sharing uh, as an act that one has to choose among relationships, of course there is, you know, relationships that are being affected by uh, each act of, of sharing. By sharing, we are you know, making a decision you know, on relationships, and we are affecting not only the person we are giving to, the elder, Example, but also affecting others who are not receiving that meat, and we are, you know, so we are. Uh, we have to be very careful to to whom we choose to to, to share with, and, and, I, and I think that is important, an important value that, that is you know, put forward by by sharing. Mm -hmm. Value that also are related to to this or to respect. 
And I, and I have this, this quote that maybe, you know, is uh, interesting to, to understand what, what does it mean, respect in this context. When I asked my grandfather about respect, about some people being respectful, <coughs> the way to show respect they did in the past is to give meat or fish after longing for it, and that is why they enjoy it very much. That is the way I have been taught to respect and help others, help each other. Others may have thought different. When we are hunt, out hunting, people distribute the caribou to other people who want it and does, who doesn't work, who are un unemployed and they cannot go to the country. They can't hunt. And basically, by by sharing something with someone, I'm, I'm manifesting this uh, this respect, and, 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 and I think this is uh, is an, an important point because by manifesting this this uh, respect for for this person, also uh, I'm. I'm and making a choice, right? I mean, this, if we think that the autonomous, autonomy is being realized by choosing, well, by choosing someone else, it's a show of respect that I'm, I'm you know, doing this for you, right? And, and again, of course, the elders appear one more time as, as part of this uh, value realization. And I also wanted to, to bring this idea of the end of enslavement because what happened by sharing is is that one is teaching others also how to properly behave in, in, in many ways. So, and this is one perhaps that define what the Inu understand for education that I think is very consistent uh, with skill. What I do in the country, I don't teach them. They learn what I do. That is the way I learn from my grandparents and parents and other people, all the Inu people learn from that. This is the Inu method. This, the Inu education. In the non-Inu culture, is very different. So this idea of learning by doing, again, you know, can be uh, associated with sharing too, in the sense that one, by sharing, one is you know, showing by example uh, you know, the, the proper thing to do. But also, something very interesting is that uh, sharing can be connected also with the animals and the uh, animal master, in the sense that uh, the, the, the animal are seen also as generous by, by giving their own meat to, to, to the people, right? And also, the, there are many stories or anecdotes that, that involve animals, animal masters, uh, that are those who, you know, uh, control the animals, uh, in which they, are, they, mani they manifest the, 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 the generosity or they manifest the respect for other animals or respect for, for the people. And they ask for that, that, respect, that respect in exchange in the same way. So by sharing also, I'm bringing along all these other you know, ideas about the world that are, that are coming in the act of sharing. That's, that, uh, but, but this, is, this doesn't have to do with the you know, moral code, if you will, because there is no really a moral code, but this is something that has to happen in practice. We have to, have to show, show my, my kids how to share and how to respect by respecting myself. I mean, there's no, there's no way uh, that I, and, and it's interesting because this is done in, in an education system where there's basically no physical punishment. There is, you know, one has to really uh, learn for those two. There is no, no you know, uh, uh, grounded thing or, you know, you don't, you don't have caribou today because you behave that way. Right? It's not like that. So that, that's, I think, an interesting thing. So regarding the, Coming back to the hunter inclusive strategy, one of the things that I that we saw in the in the distribution network that, 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 that I just show you with the different um, the different acts of, of sharing that I collected through through my my research is that the community hunt, the community based hunt, actually we share in a very centralized way. I mean, that's expected, of course. The, the bank council, the CSC. In a first nation, you know, hire a few hunters. They go hunt. They get you know, 30 caribou, and they distribute it with, you know, most most of the elders, or if not all the elders, all the people that don't have caribou and want caribou. <coughs> and of course, this would contrast with with the household-based hunt, in which you know several hunters would, would hunt, you know, a few pieces of caribou and try to distribute with the family. So, so I'm pretty, I'm a, I'm a so I'm I have some well, yeah, I have. You know my 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 thesis now, no? Because I can say, well, this is 
the value is realized in, in, in this case uh, among more people, there are more opportunities to share and to be respectful and to be generous. And while in the community-based hand, there's less, less uh, opportunity to do that. Also, because of course, uh, generosity, respect, and autonomy are more individual, or person to person, individual to individual, or person to person, acts, right? It's, it's difficult to think as the bank council has been generous by giving me that. And everybody will tell me, now this is not generosity. This is you know, simply they are doing the, the, the job, basically. I mean, they, we vote them, we, they are the authorities, and they have to do that. They are, it's their duty to distribute the meat in, in such a way. They are not choosing. They cannot choose. The official that is distributing the meat cannot choose. Cannot go, I, know, I don't give it to you. Because he knows we'll be trapped, right? It's a political position. More or less. So, but in, in some cases, there are you know, household-based hands that really are distributed in, in a centralized way, too. So, so it's not just a question of uh, community hands against uh, centralized uh, household-based hands. No? The question is more as you know, this different way of distributing, way to share, are you know producing different ways to to realize values, and and maybe it's not a question of whether it's the bank council or a hunter, but whether these values are being realized by by these hands. Probably the last year, the previous year from my research, so when I started in 2007, I started the survey in February 2008, actually. So this was the carry we obtained during 2007, basically. So several hands. So s because the arrows seem to suggest um, somebody is given caribou, but he passes it on to somebody else. Is that the correct? It or could is be it correct. Always it could be, no, it could be correct. It could be correct, but it could be also different hands. Uh -huh. in, in every household that I ask uh, what they hunt, I also ask uh, which uh, uh, which time of the year they hunt, which uh, different event of hunting, and some of them hunt several times, and they also receive. Uh, s from right. several people too. Right. So they might have consumed all what they had and they might have distributed all what they received from others, for example. Right. So, so uh, there, is a, uh, there is no connection between acts of hands and acts of giving. Oh, okay. Because also, that, that's a good question, actually, because I, I could have asked, you know, try to trace that, right? Uh, but the problem is sometimes uh, they not, people don't remember very well exactly uh, what uh, when they give to certain person. I mean, they know they give to oh, yeah. grandfather, grandfather, but they know they give. But maybe, and also when they put all the meat in the freezer, it's difficult to say, well, <laughs> I'm, giving, I'm giving to uh, this piece that I hunt or the piece that I, someone gave. And it's difficult to track. I guess, in some cases, I could have tracked that, but, but I didn't. Basically, uh, I have a, a disconnection between the hunt acts and, and the, the giving acts. So. Yeah. So, but this is many, many, uh, many hands. I mean, we, we have to, uh, you know, I think it's, it's a very safe assumption that that these are the product of several hands, and most of the the, the hunting households would go several times a year to, to hunt. I mean, it's something that they, they love to do, and they would do it uh, uh, as soon as they, they know that the caribou is around, and and well, hopefully it's not in the forbidden area. That the government doesn't allow hunt. Also, but but this is this is more or less the situation. Now, okay. one one of the things that that we have mentioned is the question of the elders. In in all the value you know, uh, quotes that I've shown you, there is always the elders being mentioned in a way or another, or as the um, the target of the respect that you know one one can uh, realize or or as you know, those who teach or, or those with whom one want to be generous with, right? So one of the things that I, that I notice that if I, when I, you know, make a progression of the shedding acts that, that happen in my <coughs> surveys, I realize that, well, there is a trend. There is more probability to receive caribou if there is, you know, one uh, elder in the, in the household. So this is not the average age of the household, but it's the age of the eldest person in the house. So the the older, if the, if the eldest person in the house, the, the eldest person has, is all, as older it is, 
the more you know, probability that one has to receive a cadmium. And that's interesting because if you see the different you know, clusters, you know, the, 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 this very centralized cluster of household based hand and this other um, uh, community distribution, uh, one might notice that there is less elder participation in this in this hand. I mean, it's, it's the elders? Pardon me? Where are marked the elders? The elders uh, are marked by the triangles, right? right? These are the house of the elders, and uh, I don't know if you, if you can appreciate from, from the from the back of the room, but they are uh, uh, black, thin lines, blue, you know, wider lines, and mm -hmm. red, wider lines. Uh, these wider lines uh, are those that signal uh, when an elder is involved in the in the, in the sharing. Act, right? So can you see them from the back? No. Yeah, we should be wider, right? Okay. Good point. Thank you. <laughs> I will try to. Uh, but in one of them, it's B gives meat to E. Yeah. He's an elder. Yes, exactly. <laughs> the red, the red ones are elders giving meat to, oh. and the blue ones are, uh, you know, receiving. Yeah, uh, the blue one is when the elders are receiving. But what, what I think is marked in this uh, graph is that is more. Elders participating in the in the sharing act, right? Yeah, in household hands, exactly. And I think the skill men we have something similar. There is a more density of skill men in this uh, uh, in the household based hand. And but, but the question is, one might think that yes. Uh, Perhaps it's the question of if the hands are organized by the community, no, in a position that if they are organized to with the, with the household of, of the household that belong to the cluster themselves. But I, but I don't think that that this completely explain the, the the difference. And perhaps the question of uh, participation of the elders in both achievement and values is what marked the difference. And that different doesn't have to do with the way of hunting, but more the way that these people, but the, the, the way that many people can participate, not only as receiving the meat, but also you know, being then themselves the person that realizes these values, being those who share too. So, yeah. So ultimately, what we can we can say is that. There is certain relation between this uh, balanced distribution in opposition to the centralized distribution, and, and that the, these topological properties, uh, that is, uh, cent the, the centralization of distribution and the balance of distribution, can uh, you know, signal or can be traces of this value that has been realized in one case while it's not realized in the other. And, and of course, these two type of hunting strategies will, will change the, the, this, these flows and also will change the, the practices uh, in the way that they are conducted. But also, that doesn't mean that if there is a household based hunt, would, would be we guarantee that these values are, are realized. They could still be the case that one person is hunting for many households and, and this, you know, uh, generos generosity or disrespect is not manifested in the same way. And that's, you know, has to do also with, with the nature of, of these values. Um, of course, uh, giving me to someone is, is, a, is a generous act, act uh, uh, always, in a way. And, and for, for someone, for, for one elder, receiving, having someone that gives them meat, uh, you know, all the time, one hunter in the family, uh, in the family group, it could be uh, you know, a realization of a certain level of generosity. But one might think also if this person have two or three you know, relatives that give, the, give, give him meat, maybe we can think that it's, it could be more respecting that too, right? That is not just one young people that is, you know, the outcast that go to hunt, goes and hunts while the other stays in town. And, and in a way, you know, it's, it's respect is not something that one simply accumulates, that we can accumulate money. It doesn't matter if I get the money from one person or from 10. 
if I get the same amount. Here, no. Here, it matters that I have two or three young, young family members that you know bring caribou to me and and, re and respects me. These three different persons. Right? So, and that is why it's not a question simply of the centralization or the question of the, the based on the community being an organization that who is sharing in opposition to being one person that is sharing. But also has to do with how many people is respecting me, right? And how, how many uh, respectful relationship I'm having. And the same, I think, with generosity. Uh, we can say that, that the same. And in the, in the question of autonomy, I think, is, is important. Because in these cases that the person decides that the caribou goes to me in opposition to other family members that are so good as they meet also marks you know that this this person is making this autonomous you know uh, choice and and this because this is an important value being autonomous also I think is uh, something that is realized in a better way in this balanced distribution so and in the ultimate well yes this means that depending how these practices are conducted, uh, uh, of course, these values and skill men will be affected, right? So, and in the end, what he says about, about the, the social is that, of course, this is not the only practices that, that make up you know, the, the community, and this whole, a lot of other many practices that also will be affecting who they know are, or, or what they want, or, or how they, they will use their the resources, right? But at least, you know, with this uh, sharing practices, we, we can signal part of this uh, social descriptor being, you know, being signaled and being, or we can trace that, that descriptor in, in this way, and, and, and perhaps know a little bit more about its specificity, right? Rather than thinking, of well, yes, sharing still can be seen as, as in opposition to the market economy. But what else does it tell? Right? And I think it tells this particular specific you know, set of relationships that, that are social through the way that it's been uh, practicing and been connecting people and the meat you know, and these values. And again, this. Uh, Imagine it's a little slow as you can. Or maybe, I, maybe I'm too fast, right? <laughs> well, same with, with a skill bed and, and maybe <coughs> but it's too. But, but again, these other many you know, practices that I haven't mentioned that also would be part of this uh, uh, different practice uh, from which uh, the social appears as a as a, as something that describes you know, the view as a particular and specific community. Right? So, and I think uh, this is it. <laughs>